when we look at a proof of work network, there are many sort of tiers. And we were just talking about the miners. And miners to us are a very critical aspect given that they have the incentive to mine this token. And the larger you get, the more global incentive there is to find these pockets of energy. So cheap electricity that can be utilized to turn into cryptocurrency. And that also pairs nicely with data centers and AI. So when we look at infrastructure and how that's utilized, we have people that are going to say El Salvador and mining on top of volcanoes because they can get free electricity there that's not being utilized for extremely cheap. You have the same for Texas that are putting Bitcoin miners on flared natural gas or flared oil wells in which that they are capturing that methane that's being emitted and converting that into a consumable fuel for their Bitcoin miners. And then on top of that as well, when we look at the existing data warehouses that are doing large AI processing or large compute for, say, AWS GCP, there's an incentive for these people when they're not running those intensive systems to be using it for cryptocurrency. So I think we're going to see an emergence of infrastructure that is more crypto ingrained and also more AI ingrained when we think about how these jobs are pairing. I won't say, you know, the AIX crypto category is super thought out yet, but it's getting there. And the infrastructure play first, I think, is the most useful because you're seeing Bitcoin miners also dabbling in running GPU or running other AI sourcing and AI jobs because they have that connection to the energy. If you look at the main bottleneck of AI right now, when we talk about infrastructure, it actually is access to energy because it's so intensive to run this processing. And then as we scale out other infrastructure, now that we have data centers and this ever-growing need to run this type of software and access it across the globe, we have to look at how this software actually runs. And so the code itself as an infrastructure. And with Quai, we've uniquely designed it so that we can shard and subnet the network. Those are two very important properties that also are tied to a lot of the research we did in which sharding allows us to break the blockchain into many different pieces. That is not a new idea. It's actually you know, been around since 2016 and other protocols have implemented sharding before. And so there's different types, data sharding, execution sharding, we're more on the data sharding side in which there are many different blockchains are running in parallel. And then the subnet idea in which the shards actually co-locate co or are correlated to a specific network topology. So you can imagine a shard running in North America, a shard running in South America, a shard running in Europe, a shard running in Asia. And the benefit of that from an infrastructure standpoint is if you look at how these nodes are connected, they actually can reduce their latencies and increase their bandwidth. And so you can imagine now, instead of it taking a second to talk to somebody across the globe, you're taking a quarter of a second because they're just a couple states away or you know, a couple countries away. And that makes it more efficient in terms of network propagation. And that infrastructure allows us to scale and reach that throughput that I talked about earlier that makes it usable for global commerce and people to actually tie it into payments and real world use cases for accepting and using crypto that we've been limited by.